Thank you very much for inviting me here today. It's really exciting to be at Sheridan because it's such a forward-thinking college and I think the lecturers, the way that you know, they're introducing the transmedia into the curriculum here is quite unique in many, in many ways and so it's very uh, exciting to be able to sort of talk to you today about the evolution of storytelling. So my company, Transmedia Storyteller, our uh, motto or our kind of sort of watchword is be remarkable. And it's not just about being the best we can be, but do stuff that people want to remark upon, do stuff that generates conversation. And I think conversation is really important uh, today. And generating conversation, generating word of mouth with the content that, and the experiences that we develop um, is demanding a new type of storyteller. Because one of the things that I always say is that entertainment and marketing are now completely baked together. You can't like develop something and then think later about how I'm going to market this. Now in the film business, that's kind of always been the way. Like when you, all your above the line costs are your marketing costs effectively. So, you know, the, actu the actor or the actress that you put in the film, the director, the genre that you choose, that's, they are all marketing decisions that are going to affect the revenue later on. But sometimes I think people maybe forget about that, but it's never been more important that we see this um, synergy, really, between the content and the experiences that we create and how we expect them to spread through these interest networks and, and among sort of social networks. So we need a new breed of storyteller. And I've got a few slides now to explain why that should be the case. So I think first and foremost, um, the internet and uh, mobile is really completely revolutionized so many uh, industries and the content industries, whether you're a publisher, whether you're a composer, a filmmaker or gamer, has really either enabled lots of opportunity or completely destroyed existing um, models that were there previously. Now one of the things I'm interested about with um, mobile technology is this idea of ubiquitous computing, that everything in the world is an opportunity to sort of kind of send feedback or react to um, kind of stimulus. Like, you know, we can get the world to do stuff that we would like it to do. And the computing is invisible to us. So we stop seeing a mobile phone and we stop seeing a computer. Everything is a computing platform. Now, I imagine in a school like this, there are lots of people that are getting excited about something like uh, the Oculus Rift, this virtual reality, uh, it's got a prosumer headset. Now, with virtual reality, you're, you are here in real life and you're stepping into a virtual world. But my type of storytelling is um, what some people call real virtuality. So instead of stepping into a virtual world, I'm taking a virtual world and I'm spreading it around reality. And I think that's a really exciting, um, a really exciting opportunity, really. I think one of the things we... It's difficult to say this in front of uh, so many filmmakers. I think the film business is dead. The film business as we used to know it, and, it, and it's particularly tough to say in Toronto because there's so many you know, opportunities here for filmmakers. I'm not saying that filmmaking is dead. I think filmmaking's alive and well. And I think filmmakers, from the traditional sense, are, at first, many were really angry that people that had not been trained in filmmakers could now create films and stick them online. And there was this kind of real antagonism between user-generated content and this professionally produced content. But now I think we see that they sit side by side and it's really up to filmmakers to say, you know, that film business that was once there isn't there anymore. We need to look for new opportunities to, you know, employ our skills. There's lots of good things that we know how to do and how do, we, how do we move forward? The audience has certainly moved forward. Um, the days of the audience fitting around your entertainment are gone. The audience expects your entertainment to fit around them. It needs to be on the right platform at the right time when they're ready to consume it. And they're no longer satisfied just to consume. They also want a voice. They also want to be active in this. And it's not just limited to, um, you know, this kind of audience empowerment is not just limited to the, uh, let's say, the creative industries. Every brand now has to 
uh, listen to consumers and there are consumers that become just sort of casual buyers through to real really big brand advocates and they expect a voice to be able to say this is how I think you should be de designing your sneakers or this is how you should be changing the shape of your car fender or something and that um, I think as well the other thing to say about the audience is people's um, recommendations and the reviews, if we think of something like TripAdvisor, for example, my wife is a TripAdvisor ninja. We never go anywhere without a full research on TripAdvisor. And this is how influential the audience has become. And actually, uh, something more pertinent to, to uh, filmmakers and game makers, I saw a presentation recently where somebody had done a study on the effect of Twitter conversation on the opening box office. And it turns out that positive sentiment on Twitter is unlikely to affect the box office, positively or negatively, but negative criticism of uh, a film will definitely affect the box office. And the speaker likened this to um, reason this, that it was this kind of fear of a loss, that if I've got to go out and I'm going to you know, spend time taking this journey to go into a theatre, um, I wanted to know that it was going to be worthwhile, and so I was more likely to avoid the loss of time and the loss of money than I was to um, think that, well, this is a great review, I'm definitely going to go and see it. I think what we're seeing with TV is that it is reinventing itself. And I think TV has had kind of more of an opportunity on the one hand because um, of its episodic nature, that you're testing the water each week. With a film, you might spend four years trying to get the finance and writing the scripts and develop it, and then it goes out and then it's done. And if people don't like it, it's like, it's all over. But I think with film, with TV, there's an opportunity to kind of adapt and adjust to where you think the opportunities are. But also, more importantly, I feel that the advertisers need it to reinvent itself. Because advertising on TV is still like the best way to reach millions of people very quickly, but it's so inefficient and money has been draining out of TV very, very quickly because there are much more efficient ways of reaching uh, the, you know, particular audiences. And if we look at audience demographics across TV, in Europe I saw a chart that the 18 to 24 segment, there's an absolute trough of people just not watching like live broadcast TV. And I think what we come to know as TV will become more like a web series you know, these internet channels. And the reason it's not happening yet is just basically because the TVs are not really set up to do that. We have this kind of compartmentalization between what is cable or what is broadcast and then what is the internet. And, of, and often the internet um, section of the TV is a poor kind of substitute for what you can get on a laptop or on, on an iPad. But once somebody actually realizes that they, these need to be integrated, then I think we can see these web channels coming through. And TV, you know, there was a guy uh, South by Southwest, who was representing an agency that does lots of big media buys, saying in the past we might be thinking about spending 50 million on one kind of series. Now we're looking at spending lots of one millions on 50 series. And we can see that it's going much more like a magazine type industry. We go into a news agent and there's all these kind of different niche interests and magazines that you've never thought, you know, model moat builder, you know, or something. And I think TV you know, is going to go that way because it's been enabled by the internet. <laughs>